بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا ضد ولا ند له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وعظيمنا وأسوتنا وقائدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه خيرته من خلقه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وترك الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده وتركنا على مهجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم ثم أما بعد Dear respected viewers, we begin by greeting you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending salawat, peace, blessings upon our master, Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we begin this week's reminder. And the reason why I am delivering the reminder this week is because our Imam, Imam Hamza Hassan Qadri has been taken ill. By COVID-19, we request everybody to keep him in your du'as and his family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him complete and speedy recovery. Ameen. Continuing from Imam Sab's previous sermons, today's topic will be about the signs, qualities and traits of the awliya, as indicated in the Quran and Sunnah. There are many, many ayat, many, many ahadith, but inshallah in today's session, we'll, we will be essentializing the concluding verses of Surah Al-Furqan, which is the 25th surah from verses 63 onwards, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he begins describing the pious and true servants of his. And this is something very relevant and important to you and I today, as we are living in a situation of fear, of grief. We do not know when or how or if we will be afflicted by this disease that is going around. And many people have lost many relatives and loved ones and they are grieving over them. But Allah tells us in the Quran that there are specific people, a specific group from amongst the believers who have nothing to fear, who will have nothing to fear. They will not experience fear, nor grief. And who are they? Allah says in Surah Yunus, He says, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ he says, Behold, verily, the friends of Allah, لا خوف عليهم, there is nothing to fear upon them, ولا هم يحزنون, nor shall they ever grieve. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the awliya. This term awliya, we must understand first, is the plural of a wali. Wali can mean a friend, a companion, a ally, a protector, etc. And Allah tells us in the Quran that He Himself, Subhanahu wa Taala, perfect and glorious is He, is the Wali of every single believer. He says in Surah Ali Imran, "Wallahu Waliyul Mu'minin," and Allah is the Wali, the ally, the friend of the believers. And nobody can possibly be a Wali without Iman. Everybody has this relationship with Allah or Allah has this relationship with everybody we should say but many of us sin and disobey Allah and what we end up doing is contaminating this friendship that Allah has with us on the opposite there are some servants due to their distinct qualities and virtues they enjoy a higher degree of friendship with Allah and as Allah has mentioned them specifically as the awliya the awliya themselves are of various levels according to their iman, their devotional acts. You know, the wali has to be an embodiment of certain characteristics. They must uphold the fara'id, the obligatory acts. They must adhere to the sunnah, the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they will excel in performing their nawafil. They are humble, they are sincere, they are noble, etc. Many, many qualities which inshallah we will be looking at today. And if we look in the Quran and sunnah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam have prescribed many many ways of getting close to Allah. For example, there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim that reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that Iman itself comprises of over 70 branches. The highest is La ilaha illallah and the lowest or the least is to remove something bothersome from the road and he concludes this by saying modesty is a fundamental branch of faith. Now all of these branches, all 70 branches of Iman draw a person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acquire his pleasure. But the awliya who have been described as those who are close to Allah, they ex experience and enjoy something different. Closeness itself is of two types. We have what we call a general closeness in the sense that every single person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to them with his attention, his love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly blessing them within their lives. And then there is a specific closeness. But this type of closeness is not a physical closeness we must stress because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he exists without form nor image. If you look in the Quran, which is our primary source of our knowledge, primary source of our guidance, there are verses which indicate, indicate the qualities and signs of such people. And it is important to constantly to look and ponder upon these signs, not only so that you and I can recognize who in our past, present or future are the awliya, but so that we can ourselves strive to attain and embed these qualities within ourselves. Before we look at the ayat, there are some ahadith that we should look at first, which describe and encourage us to be amongst these people. There is a hadith Qudsi, a tradition in where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَضُّ عَلَيْهِ وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أَحِبَّهُ فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يُبْطِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا and the hadith continues in this, the translation of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whosoever opposes or harms a wali, a friend of mine, then I declare war upon that person. And my servant, he does not draw closer to me by doing anything that I love more than the things that I have made fard upon him, compulsory upon him. And my servant continues to draw closer to me by carrying out voluntary acts of worship until I begin to love him. The hadith continues and says, when I love him, I become his ears with which he hears, his eyes by which he sees, his hands by which he holds, and his feet by which he walks. And the hadith continues. Another hadith comes to mind, which is reported in the Sahih of Ibn Hibban. Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab narrates, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once addressed the people and told them that, O oh people, listen and pay attention. إِنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ عِبَادًا لَيْسُوا بِأَنْبِيَاءِ He says that there are many people and from amongst the servants of Allah there is a certain group who are not prophets, who are not martyrs, but the prophets and martyrs envy them because of their closeness to Allah. To Allah. The companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, man hum? Who are they? La'allana nuhibbuhum, so that we may love them or be amongst them. He said, they are such people who love each other for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Quran. And their relationship with one another is not because of any family relations, nor because of any business or personal interests, but solely for the pleasure of Allah. Nabi Sallallahu describes him, he says, by Allah, their faces will be illuminated with celestial light and they will be seated on pillars of light, pulpits of light. On the day where people will be overcome with fear, they will have no fear. On the day when all will grieve, they will not grieve. 
Thereafter, Rasulullah Sallallahu recited the ayah we began with, Ala inna awliya Allah. Indeed, the friends of Allah shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes them as Alladina amanu wa kanu yattaqun. Those people who have iman, and they have something called taqwa. They adopt taqwa. Taqwa is not just something from within where we just fear Allah within our hearts. We are conscious of Allah within our hearts. Rather, taqwa is something which physically manifests within our worship, within our social dealings, within our limbs and our movements, in our privacy and public. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he lists in Surah Al-Furqan some of the ways in which this taqwa manifests in his pious and true bondsmen and servants, his ibad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, وَعِبَادُ Rahman." He calls them first and foremost, the servants of the most merciful. This is a very important point. There is nothing more noble, more virtuous than being a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the highest daraja and maqam one can hope for. In fact, it, it is this station which we declare in our shahada for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say, وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant of Allah and his messenger in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his beloved prophet with this attribute he says subhana alladhi asra bi abdih perfect and glorious is he who took his slave on this night journey so the first point is that to be a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highest maqam and the best thing we can hope for and aim towards. Allah begins the first description by saying, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ فِي الْعَرْضِ هَوْنًا يَمْشُونَ فِي الْعَرْضِ هَوْنًا Those people who walk on the earth in humility. Some ulama when describing or doing the tafsir of this ayah, they said this term هَوْنًا Does it describe the people or does it describe the walk? Those people who walk on earth in humility i.e. they walk softly on the earth, not stomping their feet or drawing attention, without pride nor arrogance in their walk and without pride or arrogance in themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another chapter of the Quran, He says, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ Don't walk upon this earth hastily. إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَلَن تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا Indeed, you cannot cleave the earth nor can you reach the mountains in height. They are such people who walk upon this earth humbly, understanding that as big as they may be in their lives, whether they are kings or what have you, they are still creation, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second description Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives about them is He says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And inshallah we will conclude upon this one. He says, when the ignorant people address them, the ignorant people address my slaves, qalu salama, they say peace. I.e., they excuse themselves from such debate. They don't engage the ignorant people and they take leave by declaring that we only wish peace. In another chapter of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands on this idea. He says, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا نَبْتَغِي الْجَاهِلِينَ That my slaves, when they hear futile speech, they turn away from it. And they say to those people that to us is our deeds and to you is yours. We greet you in peace. We do not wish to converse with the ignorance. In fact, this was a quality that the people in Jahiliya used to have. That when somebody would turn to them with ignorance, they would respond with ignorance. There is a poem from the time of the Jahiliyyah of ignorance where it says, "Ala yajhalna ahadun alayna, fanajhal fawqa jahlil jahilin." They say that no one should tread us or treat us with ignorance, otherwise we will respond with the greater ignorance of the ignorant. So this is a quality of Jahiliyyah, of the arrogance and ignorance of the people before revelation, the people who are plunged into darkness 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing his servants and slaves by saying they are the opposite of that. That when the ignorant people address them, when the people of arrogance, the people of misguidance address them, they say peace, we only want peace and they turn away from them. Inshallah in our next session we will continue with this description of the qualities and the signs of the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah. We conclude by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant both all of you and I the tawfiq, the ability, the possibility to live like a Muslim, to die like a Muslim and to rise like a Muslim on Yawmul Qiyamah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to embed these qualities within our lives, to allow us to recognize these qualities within other people and love them for that, to allow us to be from Ibadallah as salihin the pious people, the true servants of Allah. Ameen. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين